Welcome to Craigleaf Provincial Park in the heart of Blue Mountain. We're currently standing in the back of our campsite. It's not a bad campsite to have, waterfront. Uh, in this episode, we're going to be exploring the park itself, as well as we're going to be exploring the beautiful area around the park. We're going to be doing some biking, hiking, kayaking, and hopefully hit a winery or two. We're also going to be checking out Collingwood and the harbour, as well as the Blue Mountain Village. So come along and join in the fun. We are Cheryl and Ben Coles. We've been camping together for over 35 years. A few years ago, we started doing video reviews of Ontario Provincial Parks to help people when researching places to visit. We are now in season four of our park reviews. We hope this helps you when deciding where to have your next camping adventure. Thanks for coming along, Camping with the Coles. Now we only get one life, I want to make it count, honey. Come on now and take my hand. Hey, Ben. Where are yes. we off to? We are off to Craigleith Provincial Park. And it is May 12th, 2022. And the temperature right now is 26 degrees. Let's look at that. Uh -huh. we, we are in shorts and t-shirts and it's the weekend before the May 24th weekend. So uh, this is pretty amazing. We should be having some nice weather on this trip. So we'll see you at the park. See you at the park. Craigleaf Provincial Park is located on the southern shore of Georgian Bay at the base of Blue Mountain. It provides easy access to Ontario's famous Bruce Trail, Georgian Trail, and the Blue Mountain Village. Hi. Here we are at Craigleaf Provincial Park. We've just registered, or checked in I should say. We are right here. Our site is right there, 197. Dump station over here. And we don't have to fill up with water because we have water hookup at our site. And we are right on the water. So we should be good to go. We've got our tickets to uh, get through the gates. So you have to have these, otherwise you don't get, get in. So a very strange thing about this park is that uh, we have a waterfront site. So you'd think we'd be as far away from the road as you can be. But that's not the case. The road's just right over there, about 80 meters away. One thing that's unusual about this park is there's water hookups at all the electrical sites. So we have our water filter on here. And at the top of the water filter, I put on an AquaPro water regulator. That makes sure that the pressure isn't uh, too strong that could damage the plumbing in the trailer. So that's something uh, excellent to put on. And I attach this all right where the water comes out so that it's all filtered water going through my hose. There's no contamination going through my hose. Okay, this is the view from our, uh, our site. Could be slippery, so be careful. Yeah. How's that temperature wise? Oh. How, did, how did you not make noise? I said I wasn't. Thinking. Oh my. Are you going to plunge? <gasps> my feet are numb. Yeah. No polar plunge this trip, I don't think. You don't think so? So the green stuff, the the algae is very slippery here. Uh, if it is summertime and you're going in, I don't think there's any way we're going in now. This water, I think the ice just went out recently. Um, but you can see where it's worn, uh, where a lot of people have been walking in it. 
and that's where it's gray and it's not too slippery there but once you start walking out a little deeper it's going to be very slippery and you have to be careful uh, maybe some uh, decent water shoes or some tread would help but if you look down here here's the gray and it's not slippery in the gray as soon as you get to the green it's very slippery there are four campgrounds for a total of 67 electric and 89 non-electric sites. Area A has zero electric and 37 non-electric sites. Area B has 27 electric and 46 non-electric sites. Area C is radio free and has 14 electric and five non-electric sites. Area D is radio free and has 26 electric and one non-electric site. There are two beaches at Craigleith one at campground area A and one in the day use area. And they both have a pet exercise area. Now, when I say beaches, I'm just repeating what it says on the map. Uh, I wouldn't really call this a beach. There's no sand, it's just rocks. It looks like the rest of the entire shoreline. This is what they call a beach at Craigleith. This is the beach in the day use area. It's also the pet exercise area. Um, there is also a uh, large parking lot here and a picnic shelter. There's a play field with the children's playground, some swings, beach volleyball, uh, grass volleyball, and horseshoe pits. Plus a big open field to do whatever you want to do. There are three comfort stations. The one in campground area A has washrooms, showers, and laundry facilities. The one between campsite area B and C is just a washroom, but then approximately 40 meters away, there's a building that has nine showers and two toilets in it. And then we go to campground area C, which is just a washroom. Uh, and then in the day use area, they just have a vault toilet. There's one trailer dump station. It looks very old. Uh, the hose is not threaded. Uh, it's right near the comfort station in camp area B. There's a potable water fill up station in campsite area B near the uh, comfort station. Um, our campsite has a water hookup, which is kind of rare in a provincial park, so we don't need to use this. But uh, the hose is threaded if you didn't need to uh, hook it up to a filter to plug into your trailer. The shoreline road has eroded badly and it's closed. No vehicles can come down it. The only sites that uh, you can camp at on this road are the sites that have an intersection at it that you can access from the uh, road up one, one street, basically. So most of the sites are closed off. If you're hoping to catch a sunset, you want to be on the shore and campground area A or B. Then it kind of rounds a bend, so C and D don't get to see the sunset. But we can see the sunrise.
on the Georgian Trail, 1.7 kilometers east of our campsite. And uh, we found the liquor and beer store, if you're looking for it. It's on Highway 26. Two kilometers east of the park is Northwinds Beach. It's a nice sandy beach right on Georgian Bay, but again, it's right next to the highway. You never get rid of that highway noise. When you get to the end of the bike trail, how long was it? 11 kilometers yeah. or so? Turn left. Go down that way. Do not go that way. We accidentally went that way, went through town. But if you want to go to the harbor front, turn left. Right in front of the library. Nice. All right. Got all our little handy dandy tools. What do we got there? Screwdriver. Yeah. These are for uh, taking off your uh, tire and tube. Another screwdriver. So you got a slot head and a Phillips and an adjustable wrench. That's pretty good. Bigfoot Bushcraft gave us this fire starting kit. It comes with 80 plugs, a handy tin for putting in some of the plugs, and a ferro rod and striker. So let's get started. First thing you do, it's kind of a waxy little plug. They smell really nice. We'll kind of just break it apart a little bit just to expose the fluffy, felty stuff in the middle. Wish me luck. Okay, now that we've got our fire started, these um, plugs last approximately five minutes of burn time, which is plenty of time to start a fire. They work well, rain, wind, water, they're waterproof. If you'd like to uh, purchase these, just click on our link below and it will take you to the Bushcraft website. At the checkout, punch in a special discount code of COOLS15 to get 15% off your order.
We're at the Beaver River access point number three. It's a free public parking lot and it's uh, where Free Spirit Tours is if you want to rent some canoes or kayaks. But it is a free public parking lot. You can park here, take your canoes and kayaks off, go in the water here. Uh, the recommendation is to go upstream, which is towards Georgian Bay, uh, as it gets pretty shallow downstream from here. Beaver River. Access point number three. Look ahead, the sea is calm, and I know we've been through a lot, but just wait. Mm, wait for better days to come and carry us like wind in our sails. Hold on tight. I can smell the shore, it's right in front of us if we just hold. Going downstream. Getting a good workout. Yes, now on this boat, and we all know where we belong. Just wait. Ooh, wait for our home to show on the horizon. Soon we'll be there. Seven years now on this boat, and we all know where we belong. Just wait. You want to step over on the rock ledge there. Over there? Step on that rock ledge. Yeah. Big stretch. Yeah, because I've got legs for that. There you go. Come this way and step on this spot right here. Yeah, right there, good. And then can you step to the rock in front of you? There you go. trail actually continues down here but as you can see it's pretty much uh, an ice ramp going down there it's much too dangerous to attempt right now uh, a little later on in the season I think there'd be a lot less ice here and you'd be able to continue through here we're gonna have to head back from here okay so we just finished a what three and a half kilometer hike at um, not of a Thaga lookout. It was a nice scenic hike. We took a detour and went through some ice caves, but we couldn't go all the way through because of the ice slide. So we had to turn around and climb back out, but it was worth it to cool off. Um, it's also called the Singhampton Loop Trail. Yes. So if you're looking for a nice hike to do, this would be the spot to come. It's 25 kilometers from the park. 
Uh, there are some scenic caves that you can pay $25 a person to go through. Um, and I'm, I'm told some of them are closed off due to ice and snow. Nothing closed off here, except there's one impassable part mm -hmm. because of the ice, because it's just too dangerous to go through. But uh, this is a great hike. You should try it out. Time for Cheryl's Lou Review. Okay, so this fault toilet or pit toilet is just a toilet seat with a hole in the ground. There's no plumbing involved, which is sometimes a good thing because then you don't have to deal with overflowing issues, which happens at a lot of provincial parks with flushing toilets. I was surprised this does not smell at all. Maybe because it's the beginning of the season, but it seems pretty good condition. Um, there is running water. There's no soap, no solar light. Um, this is the only vault toilet in the park. It's at the day use area, but I think they would benefit to having one down at the opposite end in the non-electric area as their um, washroom facilities are closed at that end and there's nowhere to go down there. Um, overall, I think I'll rate this a flower. Cheers. Riesling. Oh yeah. I was just like, Ben's big nose got in the way. Look at how tiny the opening is. Well, my nose is too big. It doesn't fit in there, so I have to tilt my head way back. I think I even went off camera for that. Maybe a straw. <laughs> yeah. Let's change the camera angle. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, it is, it is so good. Thank you. Okay, so this over here is our Sauvagine. It's like a triple brie. Okay, yum. Um, this is goat cheddar, which is basically yep. a sharp cheddar just with goat cheese. Okay. This is uh, Pacific Rock. I'm not exactly sure what type of cheese it is, it's but it's, it's a little, it's, yeah, it's, it's a little, um, I don't know, more stinky than I guess that mm -hmm. and that. Okay. Um, this is speck. This is sausage sans sec, which translates to dry sausage. Okay. <laughs> um, these over here are homemade wine gums. Um, this is ho also house made um, red pepper jelly and strawberry rhubarb chutney. Yum. And then those little red peppers are sweet, not spicy. Good. Okay. All right. <laughs> Had to move in because of the rain. Beautiful out, but it's raining. Good afternoon, Spent. It's Georgian Hills Vineyards. Check it out. This is the Blue Mountains Public Library. It's along the Georgian Trail, two kilometers from the park. It used to be the uh, railway station here. It's right across the street from the uh, North Winds Beach and it has free Wi Fi. We're going to go inside and check it out. In this little nook that I'm sitting in right now, this is where the passengers would be able to look up and down the tracks to see the trains coming. Now, I'm no meteorologist, but I'm suspecting we might get a little bit of rain right there.
that smelled so good in there. Yeah? What were you just in? <laughs> oh my oh, god, I thought I heard my name on my face. Why would I hear my name? Oh, nice to see you. Oh my god. Oh, I'm sorry, you want to hear my Did you? Oh my gosh, yeah. Not a bad view from the top of Blue Mountain. You see the lighthouse way out in the distance? And the harbor that we biked to the other day in Collingwood. That's the furthest, biggest building. The sun could go out, we're gonna be okay. Before the blue skies rain to rain. Okay, cheers to the roost. again for Cole's notes. This was a really difficult park to do a review on. I think this is the toughest review we've done on any park because it's it's different. It's different than everywhere else we've been. Um, we can do a review on just the park and uh, what is in the park and what the park has to offer, but that doesn't really give you the whole picture. Uh, we need to do a full review of the park in the entire area around it. Yeah, we didn't spend a lot of time here because there wasn't a lot to do here. We spent, it was more of a vacation than a camping trip. Yeah. I think. Like the park itself, it's, it's a small park. Uh, the comfort stations are kind of old and kind of worn out, chipped paint. Um, there's no hiking trails, no biking trails, no amphitheater, no visitor center. There's not a lot here. And Except for this. Yes, this, this. This is what makes it. This is gorgeous. We have a waterfront site. This is basically right from our site. We're here. Um, and if you camp anywhere in the park, even if you don't have a waterfront site, there's a ton of accesses, access points that you can come down to the water. Sit on the uh, shale here and uh, have a really nice view. Mm -hmm. The one thing though, is you can't ever get away from the sound of traffic. Yeah, it's like a pull off from the highway. It, the traffic is just nonstop. It's like three rows over. Yeah, even when you're down here at the water and the waves are crashing, you still hear the traffic. You never ever get away from the traffic when you're here. Mm -hmm. So if we were just to rate the park, just the park itself. Just the park itself. Nothing else, just the park and what it has to offer. I'm looking at a four or a five. It's not a high rating for it. Provincial Park. No. What they have to offer. The real pluses to it are this. This, this area here, this. the waterfront. We've been living down here basically. And the electric sites water have water hookup. That's pretty rare in a provincial park, so it is nice to have yeah. a water hookup. But now we do the entire area around here. Well, we've been exploring so much. We keep saying, okay, we'll come back, and then we get distracted and stop in at something else. Oh, let's stop here. Oh, look, let's stop there. So there's a lot to see and do. The bicycle trail is just right across the road from yeah, the park here. It's super easy. That's an old rail trail, so it's for any level of cyclist. It's flat, it's crushed rock. I haven't mentioned yet about the uh, uh, cell phone uh, service here. Seems pretty good. We can, yeah, we can talk about Kudo, uh, TELUS, Virgin Mobile, and Bell, and all excellent service. You can stream, you can do everything full data. We can't really talk about the other ones, but this is a pretty uh, well populated area right next to Collingwood, so you probably get pretty good service from, from everything. So this type of park, it seems to be uh, a perfect spot for... A destination, an overnight, or a base camp for exploring out and about. Right, so you come here, you sleep, during the day, you go and explore the area around here. Not the park, there's not much to explore in the park, but you go and check out, there's so much in the area. We only scratch the surface of it, of, of what, you sh what we've shown you here. And if, well, I know there's so much more to do here. Uh, if any of you have any suggestions on what you should do when you come here, please put it in the comments below. 
uh, that'll help a lot of people out when they're doing research of parks to go to. Because, like I said, we only scratched the surface. There is so much to do here. We didn't have enough time to do everything. Right. We did what we could. Yeah. We crammed. Yeah. So, if we do the rating for the entirety of Our the experience trip. here, for the vacation, yeah. then what do you say? Maybe an eight? Eight. Yeah. Eight and a half? Eight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, an eight. Yeah, this is very much uh, a vacation spot, not really a camping type vacation. It's more of a well, a good vacation spot. A lot of good restaurants and places to see museums, all sorts of stuff like breweries. that. Breweries, I mean, yeah, there's there. a bunch of breweries around here too. Um, some apple orchards, so cider. We would recommend coming here, not just for the park, because. Unless you like to just come to chill, have a drink of wine, a glass of wine, read a book, just mellow out this right here, perfect. But you will be listening to the highway still. Yeah. Oh, there's a loon right there. Oh, hello. Should turn the camera around. Yeah, don't get it on camera anyway. So, uh, yeah, we would recommend coming here just for the experience of the whole area, not a real camping experience. But you can have those camping experiences like we did the canoeing and hiking and everything. Yeah, so. you just have to go find it. Yeah. Next, we're going to be going to Emily? I think so, Emily. Emily Provincial Park, and we'll see you in that video. Bye. Bye.